What's up everyone, this is Kerry. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to scrape and merge two distinct NFL data sets. While the Python code that I show you here is a little bit more advanced than the previous video on scraping NFL data, I'm gonna walk you through each line of code and explain in general what's going on. Let's look at the code. Let's first look at the tables from which we're gonna scrape our data. On the right-hand side, we have the game logs table, and I showed how to do this in my previous video on scraping NFL data using Python. On the left-hand side is the Vegas Lines table. This is also from profootballreference.com, but the data in this table and the format is different enough, we can just imagine these are from two different websites if we want to, and we're gonna to have to do quite a bit of work to get these two tables to merge. So these are the tables, and look at the side here. On the Vegas Lines, for example, this is the Arizona Cardinals from 2022. It has a game number, it has your opponent, and the spread and the over under. And over here is the game logs table. Now it looks like this is gonna be easy to merge, but because of the way these, this data is put in there, for example, there's a separate column for the at, the home or away, but that is combined in this table. And we have the week number over here in the game logs table, but over here we have the game number. So it's a little bit different and we'll do a little bit of work here to get these two lined up and merge. Here is our code. The first cell, we're gonna import NumPy as MP and Pandas as PD, which is very typical, obviously. In the second cell, this is the same thing that I showed in my first video, where I created a seasons list full of strings for the seasons from 2014, that goes up to 2022. And what I call the team abbreviations, I'm now just calling teams down here. This is a list of three letter codes that profootballreference.com uses to identify the teams. We're gonna run that cell there. And in the next cell down here, this is the way that we scrape the game logs data from profootballreference.com. And this is what I described in my scraping NFL data video. So I'm not gonna explain this code, but just kind of scroll through it here. And if this is the first time you're seeing this, you can see what we did here. I did change this to teams instead of team abbreviations. That is there to, um, iterate through the seasons and through the teams and get all the game logs table for each of those seasons and teams. And of course you wanna save the data, which we do right here, but I'm not gonna take those two steps because I've already done it. What I'm gonna do now is once you have that data saved, and I, hadn't, I did not change anything from my previous video. So for those of you who have already scraped this data and saved it on your local drive, now you can go out on this step and load the data. I'm calling this NFL DF for the data frame, and it has 4,670 rows and 74 columns. Now, this is from 2014 to 2022. In my previous video, I started in 2010. I decided to just go from 2014 because most of the analysis I do starts in 2015, and I need the previous season uh, to do some of the analysis. All right, this is something I did not show in my previous video, and I'm going to increase the size here a little bit. I'm going to drop some columns. In fact, I'm gonna drop several columns. Most of this data is on passing yards and rushing yards, all that kind of stuff, which is great, but I wanna make this data frame kind of small so that we can all see the different features and different columns and then see what happens when we merge them. If I have 74 columns and we do a merge, it's not gonna be easy to scroll through all that and see how it actually worked. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and just keep the points for each game as well as the team, of course, and the opponent. So this is what I'm gonna call NFL points DF. This is from my NFL data frame, and I'm gonna drop columns 12 on across the columns here. I'm also gonna drop basically column five here uh, because that's one that is the box score link, which we don't need. So I'm gonna drop these two columns, I'm sorry, drop multiple columns here and now if we look at the shape, instead of 4670 by 74, we get it down to 4670 by 11. Much more manageable. Some of these column names, we're gonna rename them. The unnamed four here is the win column. Unnamed six is home. Uh, TM in the game logs table is actually the offensive points for the team. And OPP period one is actually the points of the opponent scored, which I'm calling defensive points. Uh, I'm gonna rename these columns here and then look at what we actually have now. So in the verbose info, 
we now have these 11 columns, the season, the week, the team, the day, the date, whether they won or not, the overtime, home, the opponent name, and then offensive points and defensive points. So that's still quite a bit of information, and it's going to be very useful in when we combine it with the Vegas lines, which we're going to be doing here in just a second. Now, here's a cell. <laughs> At some point, we have to do this. The OPP column, the opponent column in the game logs table has the full name. I really just want those three letter codes. So what I'm doing here is creating a dictionary, a dictionary that can, a dictionary that has keys, the full name of the um, team, and then as values, the three letter code. And what I'm gonna do then is replace the values inside the opponent's column from the full team name to the three letter code. And it's much easier to manage again and to look at um, when we convert those to those codes. I'll leave this cell up here for a second. You can pause the video if you like. All right, in the next cell, we're cleaning the game logs data is what we're doing here. We're gonna change the win column so that it has a one for a win or a zero for a loss. Now, currently it's just uh, W or L, I believe. And so what we're doing here is we're applying this Lambda function. This is a little bit more advanced coding style here, where we take the value that's in the column. If it's a W, we replace it with a one. Otherwise we replace it with a zero. So when the win column, instead of a W or an L, we have a one for a win, a zero for a loss. In the overtime column, we're gonna do something similar here. If it says OT, then we'll replace that with a one. Otherwise, it's a zero. Most of those values are obviously zeros here. And finally, in the home column, we're going to look at what's in there. The only thing that's in there is the at symbol. If it's an at symbol, then we'll say zero because they're not at home. They're away. Otherwise, we put in a one. So all three of those columns get ones or zeros based on whether something happened or not. This is, again, updating our NFL game logs table. In fact, let's look at how it looks here. We have the season, the week, the team name, the day of that game, the date, whether it's a win or a loss, whether it's an overtime or not, whether it's home or away, the opponent, again, now we have a three-letter code, the offensive points, and the defensive points. Hopefully that's a lot more understandable. Now. Look at this, 4,670 rows by 11 columns. We'll keep an eye on that and make sure that our Vegas data frame matches. Now here's how we scrape the Vegas lines. I showed you the website there from profootballreference.com. This is exactly like what we did with the game logs table, but with the Vegas lines. So pretty much everything in here looks the same as before. However, looking at the URL, we now have this at the end the team, the season, and then underscore lines.htm. That is where the Vegas lines table, that's the website web page for that table. In particular, when we read HTML here, this is the scraping part, the header is in row zero, unlike the earlier one where it was row one, but the name of the table is Vegas lines, Vegas underscore lines. So we have to make sure we get that table ID correctly. And again, it returns a list of tables, but we only want that first table, so we say bracket zero there. We're gonna insert the season and the team, just like we did before in the game logs scraping. Then, in this case, we don't have an offensive data frame and defensive data frame. This one I'm just calling lines data frame. And all we wanna do now is append that to the end of the big one, the aggregate data frame, which I'm calling VEG data frame for Vegas. And because we don't specify the axes here, that means it's going across the rows. So every time we scrape a new table, we just add it to the end by row. And as always, we're gonna put this code to sleep for four to five seconds in between scraping to abide by the rules of the website. Now we're gonna save it just like we saved our game log data, but this time we're gonna call it NFL Vegas Lines 2014 to 2022. And again, I've already done this. This takes quite a bit of time, maybe 25, 30 minutes but once that's done and it's saved, then we go to this next line here and reload it. We're 
going to reload it and call this Vegas DF. And notice here, this has more rows than the game logs data frame. And that's because the Vegas lines table also includes playoff games. Right now, we're just looking at regular season games. So we don't need those rows. So that's why we're going to drop some things here. Well, first of all, we're going to drop a few columns. We're just going to keep the first six columns and drop the rest. Actually, the first, yeah, zero through five. The season, the game number, the team, opponent, the spread, and the over-under, which is also called the total. We're going to rename two of those columns. The game number, I'm going to just rename it to G because that pound symbol was giving me fits for something else. And the over-under, I like to call that total. We're going to rename those columns. So now we have G here and then total. That was pretty straightforward. And this is something that's unique to this Vegas line table as well. Because it includes the playoff games, like I mentioned before, we have to drop the last few rows in case the team made the playoff. So what I'm going to do here is query this data frame. If it's 2020 and before, uh, I'm just going to pick the first 16 games. That's the regular season games. Or if it's 2021 to 2022, I'm going to keep the first 17 games. That's the, again, the regular season games. And if we look at that and look at the shape, now we get this 4670. So that matches our game logs table. At least it matches the number of rows. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of data preparation here as well. In this particular table, the opponent's column has the at symbol followed by the team abbreviation. Well, we're gonna extract the at symbol and if we have that at symbol, we'll put a zero in here and also one and create a new row. We're going to create a new column called home. And that column will be just like our home away in our game logs table. So that should match up. In the opponent's column, we don't want the at symbol. So we're going to take everything from index one on. That's our lambda function here and save the uh, abbreviation there. But here's something else that's a little bit strange. In the data from 2014 to 2022, we have Oak for Oakland in some of those Vegas line tables. Well, we're changing that to RAI for Raiders, which matches the three letter abbreviation in our teams list. LVR is also for Raiders. STL is for the Rams and so on. You can see some of these teams that moved or maybe had been renamed or whatever. Um, that's why we have something. That's why we have this map. So we're going to have a dictionary here and replace the values in there so that all of our three letter codes match the three letter codes in our game logs table. Now check this out. The shapes before we merge data, <laughs> we really want to make sure our shapes match up in this case. 4670 by 11, 4670 by 7. Yes, that's great. These are two different data sets from two different tables, regardless of it being on the same website. It's still two different tables. So we have two different data sets. They have the same number of rows. We're hoping that they are going to be now um, match up here. And looking at this merge, this finally, in this video, this is the star of the show pd.merge. We're going to merge the NFL points data frame with the Vegas data frame on these four columns. Now the season team, opponent, and home. Those combined make a unique key where we can match up the rows in each of these two different data frames. And without those four columns, nothing would, it wouldn't be unique. It would be difficult to do a merge. Of course, the season is identifies the season, the team. So the 2014, say Cardinals, their opponent, that's not quite enough. You might think that those three would be enough, but because each team plays their divisional foes twice, uh, we did home and away. We then also need a home value to make that uniquely identify one row. One row in the NFL points data frame to one row in the Vegas data frame. Now they uniquely match up. And that is how you merge two different data sets. Now, this is something I did just to check to make sure the merge is working. You can do this with a random subset of the data set and make sure it works. 
Uh, but I'm going to looking at these two different data sets here. We're doing a little query here and then looking at the merge version and to see if these actually match up. And the NFL points data frame table is right there for the Cardinals 2014. The Vegas lines data frame is there. Looks like they match up zero to 15. And then here is the merge. Looks good. The Cardinals and the opponents, you can go back up there and make, make sure that each of these match up. The points match up and so on. And of course, then the spreads and the totals. Let's make sure we save. Points and Vegas. This is a brand new data frame, a brand new file. Make sure you save it. I hope you liked this video and got some value from it. Please subscribe to my channel and like this video. And I'll see you in the next lesson.